In just five to 10 minutes, gynecologists complete a procedure that helps diagnose cancer, resolve miscarriages, and provide reproductive health care to millions of women annually. Yet most patients have no idea how it actually works. Today, I'm taking you inside the operating room to reveal the step-by-step -step mechanics of vacuum aspiration D and C, from the moment anesthesia takes effect to the surprising technology that has replaced traditional scraping tools in modern medicine. The preparation phase is more critical than most patients realize. Hours or even a full day before the procedure, you might receive medication designed to soften and dilate your cervix before a DNC. This medication, often misoprostol, works gradually to prepare your cervix. When you arrive for the procedure, medical staff administer antibiotics to prevent infection, a standard precautionary measure that significantly reduces complication risks. Pain management also begins at this stage, tailored to your specific needs and medical history. There are several options for anesthesia during a DNC, general anesthesia, where you're asleep for the procedure. Regional anesthesia, like an epidural, which means you won't have feeling from your waist down. You're fully conscious with this type of anesthesia. Local anesthesia, which means only your cervix is numb. You're awake and have feeling in all areas of your body other than your genital area. After you receive anesthesia, your provider will begin the procedure. The cervix presents one of medicine's most fascinating challenges during a DNC. It's biologically designed to remain firmly sealed during pregnancy, a natural barrier that protects the developing fetus. This same protective feature requires careful navigation during medical procedures. The doctor must create an opening sufficient for the vacuum cannula without causing damage to the sensitive tissue. The solution comes in the form of specialized tools called dilators, smooth graduated rods that progressively increase in diameter. The procedure begins with the insertion of a speculum, that familiar duckbill-shaped device that creates space for the doctor to visualize the cervix. After the cervix comes into view, it's thoroughly cleansed with an antiseptic solution to create a sterile field. The dilation process follows, starting with a dilator just millimeters in diameter. The doctor gradually progresses to larger sizes, typically working up to between six and nine millimeters. This careful expansion creates just enough space for the vacuum cannula without traumatizing the cervical tissue. The specific dilation size depends on several factors, including your medical history and in some cases, gestational age. Once dilation is complete, the doctor introduces the vacuum cannula, a clear plastic tube approximately nine inches long with a central hollow channel. When positioned correctly within the uterus, the vacuum system activates, creating negative pressure that gently separates tissue or baby in pieces from the uterine wall and draws it through the cannula. To remove any remaining tissues, curette is used. A curette is basically long-handed curve blade. The entire procedure, from the moment you're positioned on the table until the instruments are removed, usually completes in under 10 minutes. But the entire process takes longer due to receiving anesthesia and other preparations. After tissue removal, many doctors perform an ultrasound to confirm complete evacuation ensuring no tissue remains that could cause complications. Once satisfied with the procedure's completion, all instruments are carefully removed. You're then transferred to a recovery area where medical staff monitor your vital signs and recovery progress. Most patients are able to return home within 30 to 60 minutes after the procedure, depending on the type of anesthesia used. It's normal to experience mild cramping and light bleeding, or spotting, for a few days after a DNC. Use pads, not tampons, for the bleeding. Don't begin having sex again until your healthcare provider tells you it's safe to do so, usually about one week after the procedure. You should be able to get back to your regular activities after a few days. You usually have a follow-up visit with your healthcare provider within two weeks to make sure there is no infection or other complications. After having a DNC, your next period may be early or late. This is because it's unknown how long it'll take for your uterine lining to build back up. If you had a DNC due to a miscarriage, talk to your provider about when it's safe to resume trying to get pregnant again. In some cases, your provider will want you to have at least two or three menstrual cycles before trying to conceive. 